get out of all that hubbaloo and talk about some fishing. Now, Tim, the lakes of the Elite series, that's what we're talking about. Okay. Yep. Lakes of the Elite. Um, Yes. We... So between the time that we recorded last and this podcast, they announced that there are going to be, what is it, nine? Mm, I think. Ten? Nine or ten? Either way. Lakes. on, And I'm just going to go, I'm just going to rattle them off here quick at the top. Okay. We got Louisiana, the Toledo Bend Reservoir, Texas, Lake Fork. Come on, we've talked about that one. All we talk about that one a lot. Oklahoma, Grand Lake O, the Cherokees, and it's literally just a capital O, like Land O Lakes. And Um, uh, mm -hmm. most are just just refer to it as Grand Lake. Ah, mm -hmm. so that's its official name. That yes, I know this. I'm just right. Thank you for saying this for anybody. That's just like, I've never heard of that before. I never heard of that before either. And I looked into <laughs> it. I'm like, oh, that's Grand Lake. Okay. Yeah. I did not know it was like a Lake of the Ozarks type shit. Oh, sure. Yeah. And we'll go into each one. I'm just rattling them off here at the top, right? So that people, if if they missed it. Um, so then we got yeah. Florida, the Harris Chain of Lakes. They go there. Yep. This is, that's not new to Bass by any means. I don't think any of these really are this year. Um, no. Florida. You got the St. John's River, South Carolina, Lake Murray, one of my favorites to watch. Um, I believe that is the one, one of my favorites to watch because they have those uh, fucking, now I'm blanking on it, so I'm just going to move on. <laughs> but this is the tree. Um, Alabama. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I, I know mean? what you're talking about. Yeah. Those fucking yeah, the trees, trees that are at the shorelines where it's got the big roots. Yeah. Love yeah. it. They're beautiful. Uh, yeah. and then we got Alabama lake or wheeler lake god i always fuck up lakes that are that have lake after it alabama got smith lake uh new york lake champlain and new york again with the saint lawrence river which yep. is, those are typically their enders from what i can from what i've seen in the last few years but uh we don't want to talk about them right now we will move on to our conversation just wanted to hit those off the top and then right. go, Tim, when you were looking this shit up, yeah. did you notice these all seem to be major vacation destinations? Yes. Oh my God. Dude. Yeah. They're very, dude, that lake, oh, whatever the fuck. Uh, <laughs> Grand, <laughs> Grand lake. lake. You can just call it Grand Lake. Yeah. Because yeah, that Grand was what lake it's generally. In the summer, like they go there in the spring. Because it's straight up like a Lake of the Ozarks type. There are pictures no. where there are so many goddamn boats and like a giant river boat. I don't know if it's like a casino as well, but like Probably. there are pictures that look absolutely insane. Like it looks like a blast to be there sure. and a nightmare to fish. <laughs> <laughs> that's usually how that goes, right? I mean, but that's why yeah. you're using Ozarks because that one's the more like that's the famous one. That one. Anybody who's our age and, you know, anybody who's in their like 30s, 40s would know Lake of the Ozarks is like the party zone. Like if you're from the up the Midwest, the the Great Lakes area, it's like the Ozarks yeah. is where you would go to Cancun it up, you know? Yeah. And uh, Girls Gone Wild, you know, made it famous. Girls, oh, yeah. <laughs> Girls Gone Wild. I heard there's a lot of snakes there, though. I don't know. And I don't even know if Girls Gone Wild made it famous. I just wanted to make a 90s reference. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> Girls Gone Wild got famous everywhere. They're just sending in videos. Right. Look, I got this girl drunk as she showed her boobies. And then they like <laughs> just send it to the guy and he <laughs> makes a bunch of money off of it. And that guy's like a piece of garbage or something. What a surprise. I yeah, I think there's like a whole... the. Isn't he the one that's like, there's a documentary called The Most Hated Man on the Internet? Oh, I don't know. I know the name of that documentary, but I don't know who it's about, honestly. I thought that was him. 
Uh, it might be somebody else, but I don't know. Any, at any rate, there's definitely a documentary about him and everybody talking about how he's a piece of shit. Yep. So, like, and what a surprise to come up with a yeah yeah what a like surprise gone wild. where you're like oh, every time a girl shows her boobs, I'm going to put it on a film, and then I'm going to make a bunch of money off of these girls. Right. And then later on in life, and they don't uh, get paid. The girls are like thing. Yeah. That's why OnlyFans exists. Right. Well, OnlyFans wasn't actually created for that, but then But the that's what it turned learn. into. <laughs> that's what it turned into cuz the girls are like we can remember remember those <laughs> too hot for TV and all this other stuff. <laughs> all this I can just make so much money just doing it myself. Right. And then I don't have to feel so bad about being exploited cuz but now be careful what you wish for, because I think some of them get to be like, I was tricked into it, at, you know, with the, not trying to go off on a tangent, but I think some of them get, some of them get to say they were tricked into it. And now what are you going to do? You know? Oh, you I see what you mean. Fan account, yeah, like you bought the, a camera, yeah, the you girls gone wild. There, you, you did everything and now tricked. you can't, yeah. there's no backtracking of just being like, I didn't, oh, it wasn't my choice. Yeah, it's one hundred percent your choice. Yeah, you built that. The only fans thing. I don't know <laughs> if it's going to happen though. Maybe they're just happy. They're probably. I don't know. Oh, if I got a bunch of money for shit, doing that. I I'd be pretty happy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I didn't know that. Is that why? So that that Grand Grand Lake you saw was like fucking party zone, huh? Party zone. Yes, but that's definitely more into. The summer, I would assume, because the water is going to be relatively cold there. You know, like it, it's yeah, it I mean, stays it's, relatively it's, warm down there. But I think it like drops to cold temperatures at night, which allows the water temperature to cool down. So I right. don't think it's as big of like a party zone during that time of year. I think most people are still going like, you know, we're going to go to the beaches until it hits the right temperature and then right. we'll go party. Right. So yeah. I might be wrong, but that's one thing that you have to take into account if I am wrong and they're having that kind of, uh, which I don't think because I don't know if I've ever watched, um, like coverage really close of them fishing grand Lake, but I don't ever, I'm pretty sure I have. And I don't remember it being just like, Oh yeah, I had this spot marked on my app, you know, my map. Yeah. Uh, but there's a fucking ferry there. <laughs> you know, I can't yeah. fish around. There's a this party ferry boat. just sitting on top of my spot. Yeah. I don't I can't recall a lot of Grand Lake footage either. So, yeah. I don't know. But I definitely know that they fished it. Like I that's it's not heard, new to the elite. Series, I've heard right? Grand Lake mentioned many times, so I right. know that they've fished it. But I can't remember if I've watched coverage of it or I've just heard the pros talking about Grand Lake. Right. And that's where I am with you too. Yeah. Yeah. Because I start to lose I start to lose track of the the lakes a little a little bit as you watch. Yeah. Oh, you know what, Tim? Hold on. I want to do a disclosure here before we jump back into it. Is I was not relying on Wikipedia. I do not rely on Wikipedia if I use if I think this is a general real AF TV thing is we research the topics, right? And this is, so yeah. it's good. It might sound like I'm just reading Wikipedia or that it's just a Wikipedia article. Um, I've heard a lot. I've heard a few podcasts just be like, Oh, you have a podcast. No, you just read Wikipedia. <laughs> like I've heard, right. I've heard that kind of criticism before. And I just yeah. want to let it know, like that is not really AF TV. Um, uh, sometimes if I don't trust the source, I will find multiple sources and I'll go out and this isn't Wikipedia. If I do use Wikipedia, I usually start there, find their source, go to their source. I mean, if you were here for the full thing or, you know, if you're not catching this at the split, but you were, you're on the full podcast, I just cited a people article that I was able to read that was basically ripping off a New York times article that I couldn't <laughs> read because you have to pay for New York times. Yeah. So, like, I still gave the Times credit. <laughs> right. 
But I just wasn't for one article, I, for this one article, for a brief, I wasn't going to subscribe to the New York Times. So um, yeah. I don't, it may sound like Wikipedia for my side as we get into this. I think we're going to probably run out of time given how long we've already been talking. Like, I don't know how deep we're going to get in. But point being is, I just felt like we had to make that clear that never trust one source un unless it's a trusted source. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, Correct. Okay. Sorry, Tim. Vacation. I just want to get that out of the way. Yes. Dude, these, it was so hard to find that plays into what I was just saying is yeah. when doing searches on this, I use multiple search engines every single time VRBL is coming up, Airbnb, real estate sites. Like these yeah. likes are hot, dude. They are yeah. fucking hot. They're hot and well, they're massive. Every one of them is great fishing lakes. Mm -hmm. They have multiple species, you know, mm -hmm. Lake Fork and some of these other Southern ones are great for fishing eaters too, you know, for fishing. We what? have eaters. We oh, have walleye yeah. up here, but like white bass and crappie. You right. go down there and you catch you uh, panfish because white bass are technically panfish. That's right. So if you catch all those different fish down there, like you're eating good, you know, and they <laughs> yeah, got catfish. They're fucking huge. So it's like everything but bass are that they have in those lakes are good to eat. You know, you got catfish and right. white bass and crappie and yep. the regular bass. Yeah. So it's like either you're having a blast catching big bass or you're catching stuff you can eat, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a giant body of water. Everybody likes, you know, I shouldn't say everybody, but, you know, if you like water, it's a place to go and play and stuff. And we're kind of spoiled here up in Minnesota and Wisconsin when we have so many lakes yep. that we just have an abundance. We like all of us have been like, yeah, whatever. You know, we hear about some of the in in Minnesota, especially when you hear about like an inner city kids never been fishing before, we're all like, what the fuck are you talking what? about? And then, right. Yeah. And then you go to like a different state and they're just like, most of us have never been fishing, you know, like people like right. not even inner city. They're just not next to a lake. Yeah. But here in Minnesota, it's weird because you're just like, you have like 20 lakes in minneapolis right like yeah the summer they, they you have water everywhere how have you not just how been to the not? shore once yeah yep you know but it's crazy i don't know you never know exactly what's going on but um you got to think too that in these other destinations and stuff mm -hmm. they you know from wherever they live you might have i don't know 10 15 lakes to choose from mm-hmm and none of them are that great. And then you have this one monster lake that everybody talks about. Mm, and mm -hmm, then you go, shit, mm -hmm. yeah, dude, that's where we need to go. Right. And for the most part, almost all the lakes on this list are not wide open lakes like Mille Lacs is. Yeah, know, explain where, that a little bit for the people who aren't, you know, from Minnesota yeah. or like kind of don't get it. Because I think you're right. You nailed it. I just what well, a little more detail. Here, I will give you a crazy ass stat about one of these lakes right <laughs> okay <laughs> so when we are talking about that grand lake right okay it's like yeah. the lake Let's of the ozarks it, yeah. it's big it's open it is like if you look at it on a map it is almost like what you it looks like a river the only difference mm -hmm. really is that a river has like a start and a stop and there's like current and flow. I think this probably has a little bit of current because there's a dam at play. Sure. Um, but for the most part, it's not a river. It is a lake. But when you look at it from a topical view, it yeah. looks because it's just like if you giant. Google Maps it like for yeah. the you know the new general public. <laughs> yeah. And so it branches out. But here I'll give you I'll give you a, an idea to like really let it sink into what this looks at like more. Malax Lake is massive. Huge. When you are standing on one side and looking across it, you cannot see with the naked eye the other side of the lake. It looks like an ocean or a great lake. It's huge. Yeah. Water to the but horizon. Like a, just Right. But it's like a big round lake. Yeah. There's not much for bays and stuff. It's very open. So when the wind picks up, you're dealing with a lot of wind, you know, like big, big waves. It can yeah. get super rough on a lake like Mille Lacs. You yep. can't 
go out there with a small boat on a big windy day because you're gonna get fucked up <laughs> but on on a on a lake like the grand lake even on a windy day it's not that big of a deal because there's so many arms of like you know think of it like the roots of a tree it almost there's yeah so that's much a great ground. way to put it dude yeah so get this right uh i jotted it down here um lake malax shoreline yep there's 80 miles of shoreline on lake malax yep there's 1,366 miles of shoreline on Grand Lake. <laughs> so uh, that's like how much, you know, it goes in because and out. Because every and goes outlet, around. like every, every branch out is a nice chunk of shoreline. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Like the sur- it's the surface area of it basically is what it boils down to. It's the surface area that the water has to spread. And, the surface area to land ratio, I guess, right? It's crazy. Yeah. And did do you know how many acres uh Malax is? I wasn't ready. I didn't out. look I wasn't I prepared didn't. for that. So you do that quick while I do this because we'll stick with Grand Lake, even though it's in the middle of the field as far as like or it's, you know, third third lake I think they're going to. It still doesn't yeah. matter. We're gonna keep talking about it because it's our example. So Grand Lake Grand Lake of the Cherokees in Oklahoma is why can't I, I can just read this number. Sorry. I was getting in my own goddamn head. 46,500 acres. 46,000? Yep. So here's the crazy thing. Mille Lacs is 132,516 acres. <laughs> exactly. So it's a far larger lake. Right. But because of the shoreline being round, it's just an 80 mile circle. Yep. Exactly like, what I was hoping was going to happen. I just had yeah. a feel, I had a feeling that that was going to be the case. Fucking wild, right? And that, Isn't it crazy? Yeah. Yeah. And almost all of these lakes, now I'm not big on fork. I didn't, I didn't dive in a ton on, on fork, but. Almost everything like on the circuit, on the elite circuit, it has those those bays, those sprawls. Um, it's really cool to look at these maps, I guess. And to tie it in quick before we get into more stats, because of course we're going to go in and you know we're going to talk about each one a little more. To see to see these lakes. And and to really get into it, it goes back to what we were talking about in the last episode, right? Episode 77, where we talked about fish migration. When you look at each of these lakes, though they're big and they're they're sprawling and they're in the south, you know, the majority of them in the south, and they have these inlets and stuff, they are in wildly different areas uh the the water clarity is different you know there's just so all these lakes are super different yeah and i think that's where this topic really came from was like we were talking about fish migration and how you have to like track fish migration and we're just talking about and you know we talked a lot about in our lakes here in minnesota and we're talking about just like you had a lot of personal examples in minnesota Yeah. And I was talking about river, you know, I brought like rivers to the table and all this stuff. And now you got to think about these guys are making a living doing this. Right. And I think that's where this really came from is like, we sat down to podcast about this and we looked some shit up. Yeah. These guys literally is their job to do this with every lake. And it's, and Grand Lake is 40 six thousand five hundred acres right with how much shoreline did you say like yeah with 1003 around it says 1366 miles of shoreline just so you know i checked it out it's 1565 miles to drive from minneapolis to orlando florida So it's like 200 miles difference if you stretched it out to go from right. Minneapolis 
to the most southern well not the most southern if you were point, able to like drive southern saint yeah but if you were like able to the drive the entire state. shoreline like if you got in your boat and you just tr- and you went around the shoreline you drove from minnesota to florida basically if you could do the whole shoreline at 60 miles an hour it would take you a full 24 hours to get to around to do it you probably wouldn't Maybe a little bit less than that because I'm doing the math from this 1,500 miles, so it'd be like 200 right. miles. But less yeah, than so that. roughly, so, roughly. But still, which is not something you'd be, ever be able to do. But here's another thing. So when we're talking about this, we were kind of tossing around this idea of just like, how difficult is it really to do this job? Because some people would be like, "Oh, bass fishing isn't that hard." Correct. That's where you're not wrong. That's the funny thing, is yeah. that people are just like, "Bass fishing isn't that hard." You're right. It's not that hard, Mm -hmm. but you are trying to beat the best of the best. Your job is not to go out there and catch one bass. Your job is to go out there and catch a five limit fish that is bigger than any of your uh, other competitors. Right. And you're not doing it for one day. You are doing it for two days, and then if you don't make it past those first two days, you know, you're done. Right. And then you got to do the third day, and each day is changing, and you have to consistently be able to roll with the punches and figure out this stuff. And, you know, especially, like, you're not out there using live bait. They're not sitting there with a bobber and hoping that a fish comes and eats it and stuff. Like, it's, I see. They're on timers, essentially. Yeah. There's penalties, there's rules that they can do. There's all this different stuff. They don't get a necessarily full day. There's just weird shit that I hear out there where people just be like, bass fishing isn't even that hard. No, that's why it's the most entertaining sport out there. Because when you watch bass fishing, you get to watch people catch fish. Right. It's not like you're watching nothing. You're watching them catch fish and you're hoping to see one of the giants get caught. Right. Because it's still very hard to go catch a giant, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's weird when I hear people talk about it. Just like, that's their point. It's not hard. No shit. It's awesome. <laughs> it's fun. It's that's fun. why everybody, that's why everybody loves it. But it, <laughs> it is hard to be at the top of the food chain, to be those guys that right. go out there and consistently catch fish. And here's another thing to think about. When we were just breaking all this down, like time of year, everything plays a role. But like, mm-hmm. so... When we were talking about the migration of the fish, so the my the fish um, down there are getting into like the pre spawn phase. They're getting close to like moving up to, so they'd be like staging when the for, uh, lead series starts. Yeah, because um, I uh, had it here, like all the dates and stuff. Uh, oh, sure. The the first uh, like when they go to that Toledo Bend Reservoir. Yep. Is February twenty second and twenty fifth. Yeah, so early through the twenty fifth for us. So that's crazy. Like being a northerner, right? Yeah, that's ice on the lake. We're like, still ice fishing up here. You don't even need to have your ice, your permanent ice house, off yet. You know, it's <laughs> like <laughs> right, 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 right. Good point. Yeah. So, so it's like the the state knows that it's still safe for you to have a giant ice house with like a dual axle. You know, you have to have a big truck to even be able to pull it. They're still down for having that on the water. Right. Or on the ice. On the ice, you know, yeah. That's how but solid it is up here. Right. Down there, it never freezes over and everything's starting to stage. It's starting to warm back up a little bit because that's just how things roll down there. Yep. Um, because, um, shit, I don't know where the hell it went. Oh, I started Googling all this other stuff. That's where it went. <laughs> Are you still talking about so, Toledo? The Toledo Bend. I am talking Which is about in Louisiana, Toledo, yeah. by the way, which I was just I don't know if we said that, but it's not Toledo, Ohio. It's just Right. It, it's a it's a reservoir in Louisiana. Yes. Yeah. Um, so instead of wasting time Googling this, I just I don't remember the exact times, but I went and looked it all up because uh, the basically the different regions you can go just like strips of like the different temperatures throughout Mm. our climate in the U S and you can see that the spawn happens, um, down there in like, uh, March 
they mm. start spawning down in like March. So you're still mm -hmm. like way before it. But they start moving in and they start setting up off of like points and then, then they're thinking about moving into docks and stuff. That lake is crazy deep in certain spots. So you're dealing with like floating yeah. docks and you have docks that are over like 60 feet of water in some certain Holy like areas and stuff. shit. Are you serious? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's crazy. So you have like floating docks over like 60 feet of water and it's just like shit we don't deal with up here and then right. like when they're staging and thinking about moving up think about all that water and stuff and say you know just for an example say you're like oh i'm targeting points mm -hmm. okay which one you're talking 1300 miles worth of shoreline <laughs> that has all these different art branches like a tree root right every one of those that branches off there's two points on, right on each side right of when it branches in so, and and those are just the the main points they're secondary points as well you know there, sure. there's you know like some so you got the main points and then when you go in sometimes the shoreline juts out <clears throat> and you get a secondary point you know stuff like that there's points everywhere dude there's points and, everywhere <laughs> dude i know to be, able to, to be able to break it down you got to go out there and you got to figure out what they're keying in on what they're doing, where they're at. And you have to, like I said, you all can go catch fish. The key is to be the guy that figures out where the biggest ones are sitting. You got to right. go figure out where the big ones are and what they're doing and what they're up to. Yeah. Right. You know, cause you're, you're probably going to be able to catch fish every And multiple days in a row too, with the weather changing and you know, that and however that is going to affect the fish. Because remember, you only have that window to, right. to fish in. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Sorry, did you want to go on? Because I was going to go into some more stats because I wanted to I wanted to say something back. Yeah, no, said. hit it. Yeah. You said this you said this reservoir is deep. It is. It's deep. It's got a hundred and ten <clears throat> max point on it. Okay. So to hear you say there's something over sixty, a dock. That's floating over 60 feet. First yeah. of all, not used to it, right? Oh, because yeah. all that of our lakes, they slope in. in. Yeah. Like, there's just almost no such thing as a clean drop off natural right. lake here in Minnesota. I, would, I, should, I should correct myself real quick and say that that might happen at this one. Uh, after I made reference to it, I was going back to like the Grand Lake. Like oh, I did more research okay. on that. Grand Lake has like the floating docks in 60 feet of water, but this one totally could. It could because you know? it's a reservoir, you know. <clears throat> yeah, reservoirs like, are different. Yeah, they definitely are because they're basically yeah. they're made by dams essentially, right? Mm -hmm. Um I learned a new term looking up uh Toledo Bend. Turbid. Yeah. Okay. It's <laughs> Which... just like uh Oh, it's just like stirred up water, isn't it? Yeah, it's the clarity just, of the water, basically. Yep. Yeah. We'll get into it okay. one day because I wrote it down as, as a thing to go because I started down the rabbit hole and I went, stop. Yeah. You are researching like 10 lakes. You need to stop. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> and and that that's the other thing that I wanted to bring up in this because these lakes are so big too. Like there's different clarities because you were talking about yeah. points. I'm going to go hit points. Yeah, okay, yeah. that's one thing, but there's different clarities because these things are so big. And now I know they have yeah. to take off from a certain area and all this other stuff, but that doesn't mean that there's not different clarities throughout all these, you know, different inlets and outlets and, and stuff like that anyway. So again, another thing yeah. you have to play against. For sure. Yeah, it's weird shit. Uh, I was listening to some of them and it sounds like, um, you know, like up here, a lake is a lake and it doesn't really change. You're not really dealing like a wind blown side can be dirtier, you know, cause it's going to steer up stuff. And, but sure. like with the dam lakes and stuff, like I heard um, some of the pros talking about, like I was researching some different clips and just hearing what they were talking about. And some of them are just like, yeah. And this, like you're dealing with like two different things. Like it could be clear. And they, this was crazy. Dude's from down south. He goes, it could be clear, like, you know, like three feet of visibility. Like, mm -hmm. whoa, dude, that's clear. <laughs> that's what I was going to say, but I didn't want to jump in. <laughs> I didn't want to like, over jump your yeah, reaction. Right. But yeah, three feet is clear. <laughs> yeah. And then 
it was like, or it could be muddy. And he's like, and uh, a lot of times, like we're fishing this uh, lake in spring, and we're dealing with muddy because of all the the runoff from the rain. And it's like, oh. damn, I didn't even think about that. Like, it's just like all the shit that gets washed in the water makes it all murky. Right. It's crazy. Right. And I learned that I have to learn a lot more about reservoirs, too. Like, this is another thing. Like, you have to know about all these fish, or like these locations, and you have to know about how fish act on different ones and stuff. And when I was looking at, like, um, like Lake Fork is a reservoir that... Mm-hmm. I don't know if the water is pulled out of it for certain things or what they're using it for. Oh, okay. Yeah. But like I at the current time, it's 90.83% full. And when they like, go there. Well, that that's what it was registering as right now. Oh. But it was just like, and it talks about like the different, and it was just like, oh, we do not talk about lakes in their fullness. We talk about like yeah. lakes depths and that it's lower, you know, it's a little bit low this time right. of year. Yeah. And it gets higher and they're talking about how full it is. And right. When they're, you know, it's like, I, I've never even heard anybody talk about those terms before because I've yeah, never been, we don't have reservoirs. Everything we have here is natural lakes, you know? Right. So reservoirs are a new thing to me can like completely. Right. And they're talking to, oh, it's right now it's at 402 and it's like, what? What is that what number that even, you know? I didn't get a chance <laughs> to really dig into it. And they're like, good range is, you know, normally between like 402 and 404. And right. I'm like, mm, yes. Okay. <laughs> mm, uh, mm-hmm. I'm right mm-hmm. on there. Oh, yes. Numbers. You make, so you're bringing me, like my brain's going somewhere with this <clears throat> now because this is something that I wrote down. And I just, I, I just wrote down like, how come the North isn't making a bigger play for this sort of stuff? Because they were here, well, Technically, they were in Wisconsin. Yeah, over in La Crox, and it was yep. Um, Krizik's. It was awesome. We went. It was great. There's yeah. a live podcast up or a podcast uh-huh. on location there. And yeah, now this year, I I see Lake Champlain and Saint Lawrence again. Everything else is from the south, and yeah. I know why bigger fish, blah blah blah, all that stuff, but. Everything you're saying is from a northern, someone who grew up in Minnesota fishing, which is one of the best fisheries in the country, right? As far as like fishing goes. Yeah. There's no denying that. But it is northern fishing because it freezes. (laughs) Sure. And so where I'm going with this is the the field is very mixed. I mean, look at uh, the Elite Series champion right now is Canadian, right? Right. Yep. So obviously you you have to study and learn and get to know all these new terms that the South has to know how it's going right. to affect the fish. Yeah. And well, it's also largemouth, be... these, these other two, you know, these ones in New York, Champlin and Lawrence, yeah. usually smallmouth events. Right. And you got to be ready to throw some of that, like... If you're strictly fishing in Minnesota or Canada and the only thing you ever fish for is bass, Mm -hmm. your setups are not ready to throw the baits, some of the baits that you're talking about when you go down there. Because some of their swim baits they're throwing are Mm -hmm. musky baits up here. And if you're not, if you've never thrown musky baits up here, you don't know what that's like when you're going down there, you know? Right. Right. You got 10 pounders that are inhaling like 11 inch shad style where they're thick like this they're big like that you know the bait itself is like six to eight ounces right which is way bigger than any bass uh lure that you're throwing up here way bigger so it's like you got to have a whole different setup and you got to be ready for any of that stuff and some of the guys down south are ready for that but then vice versa some of those guys down south Right. Aren't necessarily ready to come up here and drop shot. They're like, what do you, or like a Ned rig. Right. They're like, you know, uh-huh. what are you talking about? <laughs> you put on that little bitty white with that three inch stick and it don't even move. You just cast it out there. 
boy, how do you even sneak up on the fish? I could, they could see me coming from a mile away. <laughs> Clear water down there is three feet, boy. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Just, but it's like, you know, it's, it, it gives it a different mix, but I think sometimes the different, uh, the lakes that they choose, I don't know if it's necessarily like the Northern lakes are pushing for it or if it's just that bass like tries to set up like, Oh, we're just going to, you know, make it a little bit more tough. And I think honestly, I think we have an easier time going from up North down South. It seems like yeah. we are a more well-versed, um, group up here mm. because there's so many different lakes and stuff that we have uh mm -hmm. options to go fish right where Extremes you know like my and lakes and rivers well yeah i mean and... for example my home lake i get to fish and i fish that a lot because i don't have means of fishing other stuff currently but if i had my own like legitimate boat which i hopefully will soon uh nice. there you know it's it's possible for me where I live right now, 40, 50 lakes within like an hour and a half drive. Right. You know? Yeah. So I got, I got plenty of options. Some of those guys get like one lake and they're trying yeah, to like fish you all were these saying. different spots. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. It's just one giant lake. So they get to fish all this different structure and all these different elements. On but you this have to one get lake. to that one lake <clears throat> first. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, it's it's a it's a whole different ball game and I think I think right now it almost seems like when I was looking at this how they have it scheduled is just like we're going to have all this southern stuff. Mm -hmm. Some of it they're throwing a wrench in too where they're just like uh two of them are back to back. They're like a week apart. Oh, yeah. So they're just like bam bam and the, and then you have to completely switch it up. Right. Even though you're you're right down the road from where you're at you know yeah they have um which was it the leesburg florida is the harris chain of lakes yep big chain of lakes you know you're fishing all these different lakes and it's that's what it is you're fishing lakes yeah there's eight lakes on that chain of lakes <laughs> right right so you got eight different lakes those are the kinds where people start and they're just like, oh, I like this lake more like this time of year doing this. I feel really good about this spot. Mm -hmm. And that's where they'll start because they all start from the same spot and they'll drive like four lakes over. You know, they'll spend an hour and a half of their day or their morning just, trying just to driving get because they're more, like, yeah. when I get to this lake, it's going to be a really good time. I can get like four or five fish in the boat. They're all going to be big, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be worth that drive, you know? So that's another mm -hmm. thing. Like you definitely need to know where you're going. Right. You know, so get there. Cause not even, but, yeah. So you make a really good point there. It's like, not only do you need to know the lake and how to fish it and get with the fish, but as an elite series, uh, professional, you have to know how to navigate that lake really well too, because you are on a timer. You do only have a limited window to fish right. for how long. And, you know, there's penalties if you don't get back and all that stuff that you already said. So you have to yeah. know how to navigate that lake really well, too. And that was one of the bigger things. I think it's more on these reservoir lakes. I don't know for sure. But I was reading I was reading up on them and I'm not I'm not reading about fishing. I'm just reading about the lakes like I'm just gathering lake data, basically. Yeah. And it was just like, oh, yeah. Timber, flooded vegetation, you know, there are these hazards. It can be very yeah. difficult to navigate these because they go up and down and they have. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, they look submerged tree if the water's high enough. Yeah. But if they have to open right. up the dam and let them out, you know, there goes three, four feet of water. And the next thing you know, now you're having to dodge all these. Right. Stumps. Yeah. And they don't. Uh, mark all that shit all the time no no oh you mean like my with buoys right yeah yeah my my dad hit a rock when we went to the lake over one time and like, oh, yeah. that was the end of that 
Now, yeah, so, now the boat's stuck on. I remember you saying that because now the boat's yeah, stuck. It'll yeah. never, it'll never right. get back. <laughs> yeah, but no. So the the point that I was making about how like you got a weak turnaround. So they're at that oh, yeah, chain sorry. of lakes. You have that's okay. That you have that chain of lakes, and they're fishing all those lakes. You know, they're just inland lakes. It's not you know, much different. It's a lake. It's pretty straightforward. You know what's up. The one. <clears throat> A week later, in the same state, they are going to the river, the St. John's River, which is a tidal river. It has tides. Dude. It's a river. Stuff moves in. It's completely different ball game. So, and who different. knows what's going on there? What, the weird part. Seriously, too, who knows what's going on there? I read. So, I was reading about that lake. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, and the weird part too river. is like when you're looking at the different times of years because they they start up a little bit more north. Uh, mm. they're, they're, they're still in the South, but it's like more North of those Florida spots. Oh, right. They are pre-spawn on the first couple of stops. Mm-hmm. And then when they move down Florida, mm-hmm. pawn or, spawn already happened. So now you went from oh, they're post-spawn spawn here. Now, now you, went, you went from pre-spawn here and then you move down and you're post-spawn in Florida. What? Uh, except for on that river. Mm-hmm. I don't know Tyler Rivers. What's going on there? That's see, that's another thing. Like it, like I don't have the answers for anybody. This isn't us trying to teach you how to fish these lakes. No, this is us simply pointing out like how difficult it really is to be these fishermen. Because now mm-hmm. you're on a tidal river that should be post spawn. I don't know what happens in tidal rivers. Right? Do they spawn at all there? Are they swimming into a different stream to go and spawn? Are they right. are they are they post are they truly post spawn or are they up in those streams ready to come back out, and you can still go in there and find them on their beds because they started spawning a little bit ago and who knows, it right. also goes based off of water temperature so the time of year doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be spawning it's all about the weather trends and what has happened uh-huh. and if it warmed mm-hmm. up and made them move or whatever's going on so, and then <clears throat> with the tidal river. It, is it really just the streams? Do the streams even move that much? Like if you spawn, are you making a spawning bed where the tide can go in and out? And if so, if you got eggs that you're protecting, do the eggs move with the tide? <laughs> it's just like, I don't know anything about it, but I was like, that raises so many questions. So many. And you better have your poop in a group, bro, because <laughs> you got one week to get over there and and one week is when the next tournament is. There's practice days before that. Yep. So these guys, if they make it to championship Sunday or whatever it happens to be, it's not always Sunday because right. The but that's the most up. common one, yep. right? So if you make it to championship Sunday, perfect. Bada bing, bada boom. You have two or three days to move over, get everything going, and then you got to go and fish and try to like uh, learn as much as you can before the next thing goes you you have to have right all your stuff kind of ideas of what you can and can't do and you know you try to learn it but you don't you have the turnaround to go fish a body of water that is so different it's got to mm-hmm. be so tough if you don't know what you're doing you know right. obviously if you're an experienced angler and you've done all these things you've you've met all this stuff but Talk about some of these rookies when they go out and mm-hmm. they're making these moves and stuff. You're mm-hmm. like, damn, first year, this is tough. And obviously these are rookies on like the elite series or whatever. Right. And you don't just go straight to the elite series. So they probably do have some experience and stuff, but right. it's a tough, tough gig. And I think what I was kind of getting at was my my theory on how they set it up was almost like, we're going to let everybody do all this Southern stuff and mm-hmm. you're going to go catch the largemouth. I think everybody's got a good grasp on how you catch largemouth. These are elite series anglers. And then we're going to really separate the, the angler of the year mm. by making them go and fish a completely different way right. for the last two stops up in New York. Right. And one of them on a river and the other in a lake. Like right. we're gonna hit we're gonna hit you with both forms of fishing, you know, both forms of of uh bodies of water, you know. Yeah. The the two extremes that 
New York has to finish it off. Yeah. Well, in the pre and post too, like the spawning, right? Right. The pre spawn, the post spawn, yeah. like that. That shit. Well, too. and those those are all when you get later in the year with that. Those are very <clears throat> post spawn because the well, no, I shouldn't even say that. It's not mm-hmm. very post spawn because you're moving because you're moving so far north. Or no, uh, mm-hmm. post post spawn um, spawn normally happens around like June there. And you're fishing in there in August. So it's not that post spawn. Right. But, you know, it could, if it stayed cold in New York, it could be, you know, we've had, we've had spawn for bass move into like middle of June where normally it's like late May, early June. Yeah. So if theirs is normally middle of June and then it gets pushed out to the beginning of August, Dude, they could be like right there. It's yeah. weird. You don't right. know. They're not. A, they so might not be as spawned thing. out as you think yeah. they could be. Come yeah. On, so that's another thing. <clears throat> think about that when you're when you're talking about how how close everything is. What if the weather is crazy and you're getting close to the spawn? And those are that's another two that are only a week apart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Week one. It's whatever they're like finishing up spawning Mm -hmm. and week two, the next spot is almost like it's not even in a one week span. You're on a different body of water. It's almost like a different time of year. Like Mm. everything changed. Yeah. You have these preconceived notions of like, oh, hell, the fish were up shallow. Mm hmm. Just be like, not on this body of water. This body of water was five degrees warmer than that last week. Right. You know, it's right. all, it's weird, weird shit. That's all very hard to try to keep together. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tough stuff, dude. Yeah, <laughs> it is for sure. And, and, oh, go ahead. I got to say too, like I, I, I forgot to say it earlier when I was talking about like the points and stuff. Yeah. If you are a fisherman, go and pull up one of these lake maps and yeah. look at it. Yeah. And tell me that you're not overwhelmed as a motherfucker. <laughs> Do I looked at it and I'm just like, holy shit. 1,366 miles of shoreline. And if they're thinking about moving up on it, you're like, right. Right. They move up shallow. Right. Which part of this shoreline do you think is prime real estate? <laughs> like there's, you can eliminate water and stuff, but even when you break it down, there's still so much damn water. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, like, though. it's like, I mean, I shouldn't even say water. There's so much good locations. And you would have to assume too with 46,000 acres of water versus Malax's 136 right that right. the number of bass per acres of water are probably comparable sure so with all that shoreline you got to think that those fish are like grouped up in certain areas and there's dead space everywhere right where you're going to have some small fish that don't really know what they're doing and just kind of like splitting off Right. And that are just like those fish, natural selection. Those idiots got no chance. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You're catching the dumb ones that aren't going to (laughs) make. And so you said earlier that there was, you know, like we're, we're not here to teach you about each, or like teach you every lake or something like that. We're, we're here, we're here having a discussion and, you know, really FTV is, is about, teaching and talking it out and, and, you know, like failing or making mistakes, you know, learning from them, right. however you want to put it. Yeah. And you're right. We can't teach you how to fish every one of these lakes. There will be a day probably because this is, you know, we can't get into all of it. <laughs> Just sure. this would go on for, you know, three more days right. because we could do an hour on each lake. And that's mm-hmm. what I think we're getting at here <clears throat> is 
Yeah. The, there is actually a teachable moment here, or we are still, you know, doing the real AF TV teaching thing here yeah. by saying, look at this, you know, look, here's a sport that takes a lot of talent and practice and um, routine, probably, you know, that people may not see it as a, um, as a sport in the sense that this is not a, a physically elite athlete, to which I would right. say baseball players aren't necessarily either in a lot of cases. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But nobody would call baseball a simple sport or right you know nobody looks at the mlb and goes i can do that unless you actually really made an effort to do that and right and i think you know that's really what we're trying to teach here and drive home is that like there this is so much work check this out i want to go back to st john's because it blew my fucking mind doing the research on this thing yeah it's the longest river in florida at 310 miles Okay, whatever. Three. That's a long. What? That's a long. That's a long river when you're talking just a straight shot, dude. Oh yeah. No, I'm not saying that it's small. I'm just saying like, right. okay, yeah, okay, 310 miles. Look what we were just talking about with uh, the Grand Lake over in Oklahoma, right? Yeah. So it's it's like 310 shouldn't be anything crazy, but here it is, dude. Visibility. Three feet, 2.95 is what I saw. So again, this is just normal yeah. on that lake. This is, or river, sorry. It, it's so slow. It's so sprawled out. If you look at it from the aerial map, it looks like a lake. It has, it's like, it has a bunch of pools on it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you said it's it's so slow that it's less than a 30-foot drop in elevation from beginning to end. Think about that. The, it's a yeah. river that flows downhill, and the flow is 300... The length of it is 310 miles, and from beginning to end, it's less than a 30-foot drop. Now, yeah. I didn't do the math on that, but think about right. how flat that is. Yeah. That's... Well, it's like, a, it's like a drop of... It's a foot every mile. Every right? hundred miles. Well, no, a foot every mile, right? If it drops 30 Oh, yeah. Feet. Okay, 30. Yeah. I'm bad at math. You're, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But like still, a uh, only a foot? Yeah. A mile? Yeah. Right. That's, That's what... A, you're right. Good job. It goes down one foot every 5,000 some feet in length. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's crazy. Isn't that nuts? It also yeah. flows north. So it's not yeah. like the majority of the rivers in the United States. Okay. Because most flow south. You know, the, yeah. They, yeah. Yeah. And. That is you crazy. You said it was a, it was a tidal river. Yeah. So guaranteed two times a day. Yeah. The flow fucking changes direction. D uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's so, so like, when you were talking about the the in and out of the tidal, it that's yeah. the tide ha that has that big of a pull. And, and this thing so is so fish. flat and it's so fucked up. It also yeah. said that even a few days of high Sustained winds can reverse the flow. <laughs> Dude. So that makes it because it that that kind of like positions. So just just real quick. <laughs> yeah. I did uh oof the Yeah. Wind and current uh move the 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 plankton. Bait fish feed on plankton, big fish feed on bait fish it's like it's like a chain reaction it all moves yeah, it's the food web yeah with dude. the current and the flow right and that's kind of like setting you up on certain points like everything's moving in like so it's like they're on a point on like an ambush spot on where when the plankton gets pushed over and then the fish 
that are eating the plankton, you know, everything kind of just moves over that area. They get mm-hmm. ambushed. And that bait ball, they're just waiting for that shit to blow through. So, um, you know, they could be on that point on the east side. They could be on that point on the west side. They could be on the secondary point because they know when the current changes, it makes more sense for me to swim 300 feet that way and wait for the shit to move. Like those same fish, you could catch them on that body of water, hypothetically speaking. I don't know for sure, but like just based off of the little bit of knowledge you just dropped right there, Mm -hmm. it's like they could... A lot of times in the lakes, you're not necessarily, depending on the time of year, you're not necessarily dealing with them like moving down the shore. You're dealing with them kind of moving in and out. Like they'll kind of come shallow at a certain point of the day and then they'll go deeper at a certain point of the day. But with all that movement, they might be moving like shallow plus 300 feet that way and then deep plus 300 feet the other way. <laughs> or maybe 300 feet the other way again because the current switched or you know i don't even know dude i've never dealt right. with anything like that i don't know i know i've never fished a body of water where the current changes with any only based off of the wind so i don't know if that's how you know if i mm-hmm. talk to a pro and they just be if if they just be like calm down you know how things change with wind that's what happens here <laughs> and i'd be like oh okay perfect okay, or okay. or they'd just be like is it like the wind and they just go phew, phew, phew. no <laughs> <laughs> you know who right knows? but to also know but, that the tide like the tide pulls on it too right yeah. so no matter what but, it's gonna change unless the wind yeah. is strong enough like what right it's <laughs> who knows and I, for yep. sure two times a day it's gonna change and then if you know what times a day it changes or Which where things out. set up. Yeah. Like I know I've heard Ike talking about it too, where he's just like, oh, I know that at this time of day, that's going to move and I'm going to be here. Mm-hmm, and he's mm-hmm. had it figured out because he's done stuff like that. But he's talking about like New York because that's like where he's from. Up in the New England So it's area, that yeah. kind of title of shit. So it's like, he, you know, you got a feel for that. And you definitely have an advantage of you if you know. But I thought this was interesting too. Like Bassmaster was talking about all these lakes. Mm-hmm. And it says the legendary St. John's River is not next after that last one. It says... Uh, the timing of these events should make different strategies and techniques viable beyond the tried and true sight fishing methods that have ruled early events in years past. So basically they're Mm -hmm. just like, yeah, the timing because the lake before that you were just being like, I'm just going to try to find fish in the shallows and fish for them Mm -hmm. uh, is not going to work here because the tides are going to change and things are going to go different directions and the water's going to be all murky. So good fucking luck. (laughs) <laughs> you know <laughs> it's like yeah you got a win last week but try it again right you know? <laughs> right which is why um, it probably stays like locked in i would guess like i i'm guessing that that one's just locked in all the time um before yeah. before we we hang this up i wanted to point out i was very surprised so there's only the two in new york and you kind of alluded to this before um, uh, all the other southern runs, like the big, you know, the part that starts the year, dude, it's like all the same fish. Like you said, there's oh. way more than bass in there. Yeah, yeah, there is, but yeah, they're all crappies, sunnies, bass, cats, and then you know, stripers. So like yeah. I call them in that that area though. It's like every single one of these lakes fucking had it in there. And I was just like, every one of these lakes has the same species of fish in it. It's right. so crazy. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. I was looking, it's all because it's reservoirs, so it's all stocked. Oh. Yeah. So Dude, it's all that I Florida. I noted that mentally that it's like, oh, a lot of these are dams reservoirs you know a lot of these have dams on it like the first thing you read about is the dam that did this and then the dam that did that and this is how we have this lake now yeah fuck i did not they stock them yeah and they stock them that's why that's that florida strain of largemouth because they're stocking them with the florida like literally fish that would be from florida yeah so lake fork they brought in that florida 
strain yeah. of bass and now they're fucking texas giants and now it's just a bass factory yeah right they're it's just a giant body of water with like perfect structure that never gets cold you know mm-hmm. so they just keep well not never they have right but i know what you mean stretch but yeah they 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 have it's, instincts right it gets cold the fish just move to where it's comfortable or whatever but right. there there was um uh, this other smith lake in mm-hmm. alabama mm-hmm. that one again i bet has a ton of different shoreline too because that one truly looks like even like more so of roots than yes that other one it's, you know how it's roots like a, spawn little roots sometimes yeah <laughs> it looks like a varicose vein of alabama's map (laughs) it's just like man that's crazy looking um but that one uh it states that um what does it say i should just read this the elite will head to lewis smith lake in coleman alabama for an event where big spotted bass are likely to play a key role oh and uh spotted bass are actually the um hybrid of a largemouth and a smallmouth. Oh, are they? And they don't get as big as largemouth is by themselves. Right. But it says that um it's always been known for its number of spots, but the size of its bass has increased greatly in recent years due to its presence of blueback herring as main food source. Mm. So I don't know if they like stock the blueback herring now right. or what, but uh, it sounds like they get bigger. Um, so you're dealing with some good ones, like how Malax has giant smallmouths. Yeah. So you're still dealing uh, with big ones yeah i'm just gonna google so i've heard oh. well that's probably for a different episode but i've also heard them called mean mouth so maybe the mean mouth is a yeah mean mouth makes sense because the spotted word. bass has the has the temperament of like a small mouth a, small, a small mouth mouth. fights hard and yep um, but they got that little bit of extra girth to them extra mouth and, to them and i've heard some of the pros say that that's their favorite to fish oh like, really it's it's got the the got the size you know the the mm-hmm. sheer fight of a large mouth but with the temperament of a small mouth right uh, that sounds fucking awesome <laughs> gotta yeah. keep my eyes on lake smith or on, ah, on smith lake so the game you can even like kind of see it in the face it looks a little bit more uh the official 11 pound spotted bass was is the the record that's a big fish that's the world record though right the world record largemouth is like 20 right yep so you know you're you're dealing with fish that don't get as big but that's i wonder if that plays a role too because i know um i would assume spotted bass have a different temperament i wonder if it's like one or the other did they take after mom or dad you know just like, <laughs> where where could they be you know because the right the smallmouth a lot of times like to have a little bit deeper water and be around rocks and stuff and the largemouth sometimes like to sit up in the in the weeds and stuff you can catch either vice versa who knows but it's like are this the spotted bass just different all together i don't know right I don't know either, but that again, that'll be for another episode. I do like yeah. how they make the transition from Smith Lake and then they take their summer break and then they go up north to do what turns into smallmouth tournament for a, a lot of it because Smith Lake's the only one in the south that has smallmouth on it from what I could tell. And like you said, the spotted, the hybrids then come into play, which is it makes a lot of sense because big largemouth lake, but it actually has smallmouth in it too. And there you go. Right. Right. And I like how they make that transition from, yeah, I just thought that was cool. 
So anyways, we're getting really close. I mean, we're probably over an hour already. We, we yeah, we're over an hour. It, it, wrap us up, Tim. I mean, is, what else did you want to talk about? We're not going to get into any more details. We're just, we don't got time. We got to wrap it up. Yeah, man. I mean, I think that's about it. Like every every year seems to have different challenges and stuff for them. And it seems like this year they really wanted to just be like, we're going to try to keep everything for the Southern Lakes, which kind of stinks for the Northern fishermen that they have to travel down there all the time. And the guys that live down South are just already down there except for the <laughs> last, the last little leg of it. But right. um, yeah, it should be, it should be an exciting year. It sounds like a lot of these um, lakes, they have you know big bags so it's going to be a, it's going to be visually cool to see them holding mm-hmm. up monsters instead of dinks <laughs> you know yeah some of the some of the tournaments up north can can produce if it's a rough day of fishing you know the guy that weighs in the most might just have a couple of five pounders and everybody's mm-hmm. like oh look at those and then a couple of five pounders uh is going to be necessary to even make it to day two. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> down right. south. Yeah. So, yeah. For sure. And I'm, dude, I'm like second guessing myself uh, about the spotted bass. I'm almost positive it's two, but maybe I'm using the wrong terminology. So I apologize if I got that wrong, but now I'm like, is that, that right? The spot that the spotted being. bass is the the two together. Oh, well, we'll correct it in an episode maybe coming up. Let's do that. Actually, leave comments and shit on that because we've been thinking about that. We've been thinking about how to like work that into the show and like because we know we're not perfect. We so a lot of this is coming off the dome. Some of it's coming off the dome from experience, right? And and then so you kind of you try to dig back in your brain before. We're like live while we're recording because we just go live to tape. And I, so I get it. Leave a comment really if dot TV slash contact is so how you can tell us directly. We're watching it. We watch the emails. Um, yeah. So Tim, you good. You want to, you want to get into the second half here in comedy and it's going to, we're going to have yeah. a, we're going to have a nice merger here because you sent me one of the best reels. <laughs> And it was just. He caught him on a jig, a little balling out, fifteen foot, and I'm wearing a hat, and I slacklined every bit of it. I <laughs> Come to the second half. We're gonna play that whole thing. This is where fishing stand up. We're gonna make a smooth transition here with a little break in the middle for uh, Patreon.com/slash/RealLifeTV. Remember, real like fishing, real. So, what do you say? We're gonna switch over to comedy. Let's switch it over. Let's. Do it.